Hey everybody, it's Charles, your hobby hero, and today we're going to be doing our Amethyst set review. But before we get started, please hit that subscribe button in the bottom corner there. I do appreciate it. I do put out regular content about the hobbies that I love the most, with this channel being dedicated to the card games that I play. Now before we jump into the review, I will say that I feel like Amethyst is probably the weak constructed color that we have so far as far as its overall impact on the constructed format I will get into each cards limited abilities and its potential and constructed but make sure you let me know in the comment section below what you guys think of the amethyst card pool in set one so without further ado let's go ahead and jump right in all right guys we're back on dreamborn Inc going through amethyst we're gonna be reviewing them from lowest cost to highest cost starting with Archimedes he is a one drop inkable 2-2 for one lore generation uh, perfectly fine in limited even in constructed if your decks a little slower you may want to play this guy just to help keep up with the early rush all around perfectly suitable card being inkable and a decent body he's going to trade with most one drops two drops and possibly even any three drops that you may see next up is maleficent she's a one drop inkable she's a one one with two lore generation not being inkable makes her an absolutely horrible top deck outside of like maybe turns one and two she does not trade favorably anywhere people are going to kill her early and often She's really only viable in like a very rush-centric deck. Uh, if you're playing that in Constructed, I, I, she is probably good enough to make that cut. If you're playing that format in Limited, they do have fewer options as far as just direct ways to deal with her. So you may be able to trade more favorably. I think she's probably fine, but not being inkable, it's really going to hate seeing this card after like turn three, turn four and five, and anything past that, she's probably just going to be a dead card in your hand unless you've already just gone super wide on the board anyways. Olaf, another one drop here, inkable. He's a one three with one lore generation. I don't think he's got a spot in constructed with those stats. He's not going to be able to remove other characters through challenging very often. Unlimited, he's probably fine as he's going to be able to pick off smaller characters. He's going to be able to do this last bit of damage to some characters and possibly still survive. Two strength is a pretty common power, even on some of like the, the smaller four drops in this game. So it could be perfectly fine and limited, especially since he's inkable. Uh, then we have Pascal. Pascal is a one drop inkable, one one for one lore generator with the ability camouflage. Basically, if you have another character in play, this character gains evasive. This guy is a very subtle, consistent lore generator. Evasive is a very amazing ability, especially in limited. This guy is an absolute all-star. He's just gonna sit out there and generate you one lore every turn, <laughs> and then possibly be able to, you know, attack into other evasive characters if it's ever necessary. I think this guy's an absolute auto include in any limited deck that you're building. Now in Constructed, if you're playing that Rush deck, again he's got a very good spot in that Rush deck. If you're not playing Rush, I don't think you really want a one lore generator for one, even if it is evasive. A much higher chance that you're going to get blown out with this card too, as the opponent's going to have a Constructed deck built with probably removal in it possibly removing your other characters in play and then just picking this 1-1 one, one off very early. Uh, again, fine if you're playing the deck with him, but otherwise I'd probably stay away from him. Befuddle, we got a one drop for, uh, sorry, Befuddle, we've got a one drop here, inkable action, return a character or item with two or less cost to that player's hand. Uh, I, I don't really like this card. It is inkable uh, for limited. I, I just don't think it's enough tempo s swing. I mean, to be able to bounce a two drop for one is slightly advantageous. I just don't know if that's enough to include in the deck. Being inkable, it might make the cut. And constructed, I think you're just always going to do other things. I don't think there are enough uh, key cards in the format right now to make this an inclusion into an Amethyst deck. Now, if the Amber aggro deck just absolutely takes over the format, this absolutely does have a spot as it could bounce their Simba and allow you to swing into their smaller guys behind it, your Lilos, your Maleficents, uh, the Pascals. But otherwise, I, I don't think that this is good enough to warrant a spot in Constructed currently, maybe somewhere down the line. Uh, Reflection, I uh, reviewed this card when it was spoiled. It is a one drop action. It is a song that's a one drop, ironically enough. 
Uh, it is inkable. Uh, it looks at the top three cards of your deck and you can put them back on top of your deck in any order. This card is absolutely trash. Do not play it. Don't play it anywhere. Information is good, but this does not let you do very much with that information. Uh, if you've got three bogus cards on top of your deck, you're still gonna have to draw those three bogus cards. You can't get rid of any of them. You don't can trip off this card. It doesn't draw you a card. You just rearrange those cards. You can sequence your draw a little bit better at the cost of a card in your deck and a tempo of one ink. Just not worth it in my opinion. Do, do not play this card. Dr. Facilier is next, a two drop. Inkable zero four, uh, one ink, challenger two, uh, which basically means when he challenges, he gets plus two strength. Do not forget that he does not get that when he gets challenged. Uh, I do not like this card uh, for constructed play. I think the fact that he can't sing friends on the other side in Amethyst is a big negative, whereas the bigger Dr. Facilier can, if you're looking to ramp into that seven drop Dr. Facilier, I don't think you wanna play eight copies of the smaller ones. Uh, and limited, however, he's inkable. He can challenge as a 2-4, which is actually pretty substantial, and leave to attack that early, in, or two willpower, even if he challenges a 2-2 two -two character, which is pretty hard to deal with. I mean, if you play against it enough, you're gonna realize how few times you can actually swing back into him right away and kill him, even with that zero strength on the, the defense. And then obviously in the limited format, he is a target for the big facilier. So if he's in your deck, you're probably gonna wanna play as many of these as possible. And constructed, I don't think this is where you wanna be at, at two, even if he is inkable. Uh, however, on the other end of that spectrum, we have the Magic Brooms for two. They are two twos, one ink with the ability sweep. When you play this character, you may shuffle a card from any discard into its player's deck. So don't forget that you can shuffle bad cards back into your opponent's deck as well if you don't have a good target for yourself. This card is an absolute insane bomb and limited recycling friends on the other side, recycling your graveyard uh, with Hades, recycling all the, the car cantrips, the Maleficence, all those cards that you want to see more of after they've been dealt with, you can recycle it back into your deck. Also combos very well with the Sorcerer Mickey that we're going to get to here very well. And it's inkable uh, to top that off. So very, very strong all the way around card. I think the Mickey Magic Broom engine is good enough for constructed play, but unlimited is absolutely insane. Uh, this card, even if you can't get the Mickey engine, it's got a lot of value on it because it's, uh, again, not a bad body at all for two. It's inkable and has a decent ability as well. Uh, Yizma, she's a two inkable, two, two for one. Again, pretty basic stats for a two drop. Uh, with the ability you're excused, whenever this character quests, look at the top card of your deck, put it on either the top or the bottom of your deck. I actually really like this ability for limited. Again, we talked about how information has value, but not, you know, value for nothing, where this one has a decent body. You are not really making any sacrifices to get this ability whenever she quests. Uh, helps dig uh, to whatever big card you're trying to get to. In Constructed, she's probably not good enough just because the stats aren't anything special. She may be fine depending on what color combination you're playing. You may not have a better option at two, uh, but I know like green and blue in particular are pretty loaded up with good two drops, so she probably gets bounced out in those. If you are playing a red combination deck, she's probably fine to stay in in that build. Again, you're not really trading anything off for the this ability to, to dig a little deeper. You're just nothing impressive on the stat line either. Uh, freeze, we have a two drop uninkable action, exert opposing character. Uh, again, a good ability, just not a good ability as a one-time use, especially on an uninkable action. Very few times are you gonna want to play two to exert a character and then that loss of tempo you still have to adjust for. Like you could place something behind it, if this was a song and could be sung, I think it's probably good enough. It was inkable. Again, you could have it in there just as a, a just in case. But the reality is, is not being inkable and an ability that you're not always going to want to play is just a bad recipe for limited or constructed. I don't think you want to mess with this card. Uh, Magic Mirror, two drop item, uninkable. Uh, pay four and exert it to draw a card. Uh, we'll start with this card. I think it is constructed playable in the right deck. I don't know that that deck is viable right now, but I think that it is good enough. Draw cards 
is very difficult. Unfortunately for this card, it is in the color that does draw cards the best. So you're already competing for deck space with cards like Friends on the other side and Maleficent and even the Queen that we'll get into here in a little bit. So I think it probably falls pretty far down the list on Constructed. Now there could be a point in time where it's just good enough for having a reoccurring card draw every single turn. If you're playing kind of an aggro deck, this card comes down early enough. It's not going to clog your hand and you can really consistently keep drawing off of it. And you're playing smaller characters anyways. So the four cost really isn't a hindrance. I think there could be a deck this fits in. Now limited this card is absolutely nuts. Uh, card draw is so, so limited in that format to have a card that drops relatively early. So you don't have to worry about clogging up your hand late in the game and then can immediately be activated and can be activated every turn to draw a card is going to be insane. Limited very, very often gets into top decking mode and this is gonna give you basically two cracks a turn to outdraw your opponent. Love this card. I think you play it in pretty much any limited deck that you're gonna be building. Ursula's Cauldron here in comparison is another uh, item for two. Uh, uninkable peer into the depths, you tap it, look at the top two cards of your deck, put one on the top of your deck and the other on the bottom. Again, we're talking about that information. Now this information is at least every turn. Now this card is not inkable and I don't think it's giving enough information to be included in any constructed decks. In limited, you're probably fine running one of these. As again, most games are gonna end up in a straight top decking mode. And with this card, you can guarantee you're drawing the best option out of your next two cards. Now it is problematic if you have two good cards on top or two bad cards on top, you can't keep them uh, both or get rid of them both. You're going to have to keep one and get rid of one. So there is some, I guess, risk involved to it, but you don't really know that until you get into those situations. And overall, statistically speaking, it's going to make your draws better than your opponent's draws. So like I said, I think it's probably fine in limited numbers uh, in the limited format. Dr. Facilier, three drop, uh, the remarkable gentleman. He is inkable. He is a 2-4, one lore generator. When you play a song, you may look at the top two cards of your deck, put one of them on the top of your deck and the other on the bottom. Now his ability isn't great. However, he can sing Friends on the Other Side, which allows you to draw two and kind of peek at those two to see if those are gonna be what you want to draw. Uh, his stats are, again, two, four, harder to deal with than you might think of in a limited format. Uh, great target for Facilier if you're going to be ramping or shifting into him as well. For Constructed, again, he can sing Friends on the Other Side and can be shifted into Facilier. That's really where the value is on this character. If you're building that deck, this is probably the facility I would use. Uh, Elsa, Snow Queen here, two, three, four, three, with one lore generation, she is inkable. She has the ability freeze, which is the action we just saw above, which she can exert herself to exert a chosen character. Pretty solid ability, uh, allows you to tap their character down and then challenge that character if you're wanting to. Uh, now, it, she also shifts up into the 8-drop Elsa, which we'll look at here in a minute. I think this card's perfectly acceptable in uh, a constructed format if your top end especially is that Elsa. Even not topping out with that Elsa, she just got a very nice ability to help control the board if you're kind of playing that game. Uh, and limited, she's a bomb though. I mean, anything that can help you kill your opponent's characters more efficiently when they're trying to hold them back, especially with the recursion that you have, the rush characters that you have access to in this color, she is just very, very useful in that. And again, there's no cost associated with it. She just has to exert herself to exert another character. At three, her body's decent enough that she, they may not be able to remove her right away, especially if you take out the biggest character they have on their side. They may not have much to swing back at her with. Uh, Maleficent here, three drop, inkable, two, two, one lore generator. Uh, nothing special stat wise, you know, probably a little understated for a three drop. However, she has the ability to cast my spell. When you play this character, you may, may draw a card. She replaces herself immediately for a decent sized body. This card is pretty much an auto include in any constructed deck that plays Amethyst, in my opinion, is playing four of this card. The ability to put presence on the board for basically free because she replaces yourself. No hand at disadvantage to playing this card it makes her extremely strong. She can sing friends on the other side. And again, her stats are not terrible for three drop. 
and limited. You're going to play as many copies of this as you can because you're just never going to be upset to play this card. Late game, top decking this card doesn't feel bad. You're going to pay three to draw the next card and you've put something on the board. Just all around great card. And again, to top everything off, she is inkable as well. Rafiki over here, three drop uninkable, three, three, one Lord Generator with the ability Rush, which means he can challenge the turn that he comes into play. Uh, not being inkable and only having the stat lines that he has, i not super favorable for this guy in Constructed. In the right color combinations or the wrong color combinations, however you want to look at it, like he may have a spot if you just don't have enough support or if you're just not playing enough removal with your, your other color and you kind of have to rely on this guy as your removal piece. Uh, but not being inkable really just kind of tips the scale away from this guy. I would just always probably look for other options in Constructed. Now, Unlimited, removal is removal, and this guy is a solid piece of it. On turn three, he is pretty much going to trade anything that even for anything that's out there with the recursion that purple or amethyst has he can also be reused over and over and over again and that rush is super relevant in the, those scenarios i've played some games where i've had a dr facilier out and i just play this guy and rush into a six-bodied guy twice uh, which is very very effective uh, i really like this card uh, for limited, uh, again, but for constructed, I just don't think that there's going to be very many builds that have a have a spot for this guy. Uh, the wardrobe, three drop, uh, inkable, three four, one lord generator, one lord generation for three drop spots. Pretty low. Her stats are pretty beefy though, which makes her really good for limited. Unfortunately for construction, she really doesn't have a home. There's no real synergy with anything else. Uh, that Amethyst is trying to do. I don't think she's going to make a limit or, or the uh, constructed cut, but for limited, she is perfectly fine and she's going to trade favorably with a lot of three drops. Friends on the other side. Now, this is a three cost inkable action and a song uh, that draws two cards. So it is a plus one card when it is played. This card is going to be four of in every Amethyst deck you ever encounter. I will bet money on it outside of somebody just trying to troll me for this comment right here. There's absolutely no reason why you will not play four of this in any Amethyst deck. It is insane card advantage, insane value when you can play it for free, not bad value whenever you have to pay it at, for three ink cost, and it's inkable. There's just no reason to not play four of this card in your Amethyst. It's one of the the best draw engines that we have in the game so far comes down very early, comes down very efficiently, and has no downside being inkable. Same with limited. You're never not going to want to play card advantage cards in limited, and this is no exception. Uh, you will want to play as many copies of this as often as you can play it. Now, the White Rabbit's Watch here is another item, three drop inkable. Uh, with the ability I'm late, you exhaust it, and an ink choose uh, chosen character gains rush this turn. Now, rush is a valuable skill. Paying three for an item and then having to pay one in addition, so you're, you're behind curve anytime you want to use this ability. I just don't know that it's got a spot and constructed because of that. Now, if you could generate lore, when your character had Rush, that would be an entirely different subject. But again, when they have Rush, all they're able to do is challenge. So there may not even be a target for them to challenge out there, which means this item just kind of sitting in play. It is inkable. So in those matchups, you can always just throw it into your inkwell. So it's not a completely terrible card. And limited, again, this is a card that since it's reoccurring, there's probably enough opportunity to generate value off of it to play a copy or two since this one is inkable, but I wouldn't be loading up and it wouldn't be a high priority, uh, high priority or high emphasis card for, for my pool. Uh, then we've got Anna down here, heir to Arendelle. She's a four drop, inkable, two four, two lore generator. I think our first two lore generator for purple. She has the ability Loving Heart when you play this character. If you have a character named Elsa in play, which we just looked at uh, one of the Elsas, uh, you can choose a character and that character doesn't ready at the start of their next turn. So if they have a character that is tapped down already or exerted already, she keeps them from readying the following turn. Now her ability is very conditional. One, you have to have the Elsa still in play. So if they've already taken care of the Elsa, or you haven't drawn her yet, she doesn't have an ability at all. And then after you have that Elsa in play, they also have to have an exerted character for this effect to have anything. So there's 
going to be times where this effect is really good and there's going to be more times though that this has no effect whatsoever and then you really just look at the stat line two lore generation and as a two four is not terrible for limited but for constructed that is just not going to cut it and therefore i don't think you're going to see a whole lot of her if any in constructed and limited she's fine though two lore generation is good at four even if the stats are a little on the low side and the fact that she's inkable is always going to be a live card in your hand uh, we also have the Elsa here, Queen Regent. She's a 4-4 four, four for 4 inkable with low, one lore, Vanilla. Uh, again, a little understated for a 4-drop with only one lore. They try to make up for it with a slightly higher uh, power and uh, or strength and willpower. She's probably fine and limited uh, to trade. She's a, a decent-sized body that early in the game. You're probably going to 2 for 1 somebody with her if you're... you're fortunate uh, with those challenges being a one lore generator she's not going to see constructed play there's just way too many other options around here uh, the only way i could see it is if there was just some deck that was really just laser focused on getting the eight drop elsa out as soon as possible and they wanted to run a full eight set of elsas you know she's not terrible uh, in, in that scenario especially since she can help pay the ink to to get to that Elsa the the old fashioned way as well. The next we have Jafar at four inkable. He is a 052 lore generator with the ability Hidden Wonders. This character gets plus one strength. Uh, in limited, this guy's fine. Again, two lore generation at four. And this guy's for several turns is probably gonna have four or five uh, strength, especially in the color who's drawing lots of extra cards. Uh, you can keep him around a 4-5 pretty easily, uh, pretty regularly, sometimes even bigger than that. So it's going to be hard to trade advantageously with him. In Constructed, there may be a deck that emerges with this guy. Again, 2 lore generation at 4, not great, but not terrible either, especially in Amethyst. Uh, and with cards like A Whole New World, where you can just throw this guy up to 7 power real quick, it makes it very hard for them to take him out easily without just direct removal spells. So... Uh, not super keen on him on Constructed, just because that's really all he is, is a big body with lower generation. But in Limited, this guy is usually going to be an absolute house, and your opponent's really never going to want to see this guy hit. Uh, we also have the other Jafar at 4, Inkable. He's a 2-5, one lower generation, ugh, sorry, one lower generation with Challenger 3, which means he is challenging at a 5-5. Five, five. This guy is actually really offensive in Limited. The times I've played against him, you just never want to see it. He just trades so high up with that five attack. I mean, there are several six drops that he can take down and survive their attack with that five willpower. Just a very offensive guy. A four constructed format. The fact that he only generates one lore and the fact that he can be dealt with usually much easier in constructed it means he's probably not going to see any constructed play, at least not until we get possibly a bigger Jafar in the future. The next one up is Jetsum. We have a four drop inkable 3-3 three, three with evasive uh, with the ability Sinister Slither. Your character's named Flotsam also gain evasive. Evasive is a very strong power in limited format and as such a one lord generator at four not great but with evasive is very nice. It also allows him to challenge some of your opponent's evasive characters if need be. As purple it does not have a ton of direct damage or direct removal options. Uh, so I, I do like this guy. I think his stats, unfortunately, are going to keep him from being constructed viable, but in limited, definitely a playable card. Uh, the next up, we've got Sorcerer Mickey. We were talking about him earlier with the Magic Brooms. He's a four drop, inkable, three, four, two lore generator. So solid stats already. You know, if we look at back at the other four drops, like his stats are really on par, if not better than the other four drops. And then he's got these abilities, Animate Broom. You pay one less for those brooms, which means they are now one drops instead of two drops. And Ceaseless Worker. Whenever one of your broom characters is banished in a challenge, you may return that card to your hand. So you can just challenge willy-nilly with this character uh, and his brooms. They're going to bounce to your hand. You're going to be recycling cards, replaying them. Just an absolutely insane card in Limited. And honestly, I think there's enough potential with this engine that it could be constructed viable as well if the right decks emerge with that guy. It's just a ton of card advantage. 
And again, you're going to be playing really good cards and recycling them back into your deck so that you can keep playing them over and over again. Or you're going to be clogging your opponent's deck up if you don't have good targets and you're recycling their low drops when we're five or six turns back into the game so that their to top decks are going to be worse than yours. So just really like this card all in all. Zeus got a lightning, four drop uninkable, zero four, two lore generator. He has rush and challenger, which means he challenges as a four four. Uh, if this guy was just a four four, I would be really, really keen on this card. Uh, he does have two lore generation, which kind of is unusual for a rush challenger. Usually there are only one lore generators, but I think that makes him worse in a lot of scenarios because that's really what you want to want this guy to do is come in at four attack one of their big guys and then hopefully survive that attack and they have to commit another guy to him or he can attack again the next turn but being a zero strength guy just means they're going to take him out the following turn and you're really only going to get a probably a one for one exchange with that i, I would rather have him just had one lower generation and have been a four four and not worried about the challenger at all the fact that he's uninkable, I think, makes him kind of tricky. He is removal, which means he is limited viable, but I don't think he's going to make it constructed playable just for those reasons I mentioned. Uh, then we have Flotsam, the other combo piece to Jetsam. Five drop, uninkable. He's a 3 4, 2 lore generator, has rush, and gives Jetsam rush. Uh, again, he's rush, he's pseudo removal, so he's probably getting played in limited. Unfortunately, again, not inkable. And at five drop, that's not inkable. That really is just coming in to hopefully trade with a smaller character is not constructed uh, worthy, in my opinion. And we have the queen up next. She's a five drop inkable, four, five, one lore generation. The ability I summon thee, you can exert her to draw a card. On paper, this character looks very, very powerful, you know, just as a card engine. Unfortunately, in Constructed, she hits play about the same time that everybody has access to their best removal spells. Uh, so that really hinders the value you're going to get out of her. You're basically paying five to get them to pay five the next turn to take care of her. Very rarely when I'm playing do I see her get to draw a card because of when she hits. They've been holding that removal. They've been inking to where they can finally take care of a threat and she's the first big threat that hits the board and she's usually gone after that. Now, having said that, she is a big threat and she can stick in play. She absolutely can turn the game around in your favor. And I think in Limited is very easy for that to happen. She's absolute bomb in Limited, uh, decent body. Lord Generation's never really what she was intended for. You're always probably gonna wanna exert her to draw that card. Uh, very, very solid and Limited. Constructed, viable maybe, but just not as good as she looks on paper in the constructed format. Uh, next we have is Tinkerbell. She's a five drop, uninkable, three, three for two lore generation with evasive uh, and the ability loyal and devoted. Your character's name, Peter Pan, gain challenger one. Uh, the, the second ability is pretty much a blank. However, she is a two lore generation ev evasive character, which is perfectly fine for limited. For Constructed, uh, not being inkable in these stats are probably just not good enough. The fact that she does anything with Peter Pan, I don't think any Peter Pans are Constructed viable, so it really doesn't make any difference what the second ability is. Uh, but for Limited, again, I don't want to run a ton of them because five uninkable is a lot to deal with. But again, two Lord Generation evasives are very, very nice as well, especially one that survives some of the more common removal that is out there. Then we have Marshmallow, six drop uninkable. He is a five, five body, one lore generator with the ability durable. When this character is banished in a challenge, you may return this character to your hand. Uh, in limited, I, I think this guy's fine because he's in Amethyst. Amethyst has enough cards to naturally ink up to six. I think a lot of other colors can struggle getting to six, especially if they're running a lot of uninkable cards like this. And being able to get to six naturally is very important for this guy as he is uninkable on that high end. Five, five body is very, very big. You're basically going to just keep challenging with this guy forever. His lower generation is pretty inconsequential. And it, again, it's only one for constructed. That's just not going to cut it. People are going to have ways to deal with him uh, very easily. Most decks are running ways to banish this guy without challenging him. If they even are that worried about it. 
So I don't think he's constructively viable and limited. You can't run a ton of them though because that six drop and being uninkable. But if you can get one of them in your deck, this guy will absolutely be a house while he's in play. Same with his counterpart here, Sven at six. He is inkable. He is a five, seven. So a little bit bigger stats, same lore generation. He does not return to your hand, but your trade off there is he is inkable and has the extra willpower. This guy is almost always going to be a two for one, sometimes even a three for one. His stats are just that big, absolute house in limited format. In constructed format, again, stats aren't that important that late in the game. And unfortunately, without an ability, it's just not standard viable. Uh, but we'll absolutely just take the game away in the uh, limited format, especially again, like I said, because you can get to six pretty easily in Amethyst with all the extra card draw. Dr. Facilier here at seven uninkable. He is a four, five, three lore generation. Honestly, this guy could have had zero lore generation. Uh, because this guy is almost never going to turn sideways, except on the last turn of the game. He's got the ability to shift five, which means that seven can be brought all the way down to a five if you have another Dr. Facilier in play. And the ability into the shadows, which is insane. One of your, Whenever one of your characters is banished in a challenge, you may return that character to your hand. This is probably the biggest limited bomb you could possibly get. The fact that he has these stats that could come in on five, he has multiple targets to shift from as well, and his ability is just absolutely earth-shatteringly good in limited. This guy is the first pickable over any other card that I have reviewed or will review. This guy is just absolutely nuts in limited. Having said that, like in constructed, his biggest drawback is that his Cards that he shifts from are just not that good. And there's a plethora of removal spells out there that can remove characters without challenging them, which makes this guy less effective in Constructed. He absolutely has a home in Constructed if you're building around him. His effect is just that good. However, he is significantly worse in the Constructed format as people will just have better ways to deal with his Into the Shadows, where in Limited, they could have absolutely none and just be stuck hoping you make a mistake at that point in time, which is not where you want to be at. Uh, we have Ursula here, uh, who is our Legendary. She's a 7-drop, our first Legendary, rather, 7-drop, uninkable. She is a 2-8-3 lore generator, and that's really the extent of her ability. She does replace herself when you play her, uh, because if your opponent has one lore, they lose one lore, and then you draw a card for each lore loss this way. I think this character is not currently playable, except in the multiplayer format. If you are akin to playing in like four to whatever number of people in those games, then I think she is perfectly fine in those formats because she's going to net so many cards because she does it per opponent. Otherwise, I just don't think she's good. The stats, you know, the eight willpower is really nice, uh, you know, if they're going to try to challenge her off the board, but they're probably just going to remove her if they even care. And the fact that she only has two strength means she can't really challenge favorable anywhere near the stuff that she's trying to challenge up at turn seven. She is not inkable. She, so which means you're really going to struggle getting to seven, or she's not shiftable, which means you're really going to struggle to get to seven and not inkable on top of that to make it a hard card to hold in your hand. Three Lord Generation is nice, but again, just not enough to make her playable in a, a 1v1 format, limited or constructed. And then our last card and legendary, we have the drop Elsa. She is uh, uninkable, four, six, three Lord Generator. Uh, so really it's about the same stats. They just kind of balanced out the strength and willpower a little bit, three Lord Generation. However, they gave this one shift, which means if you have a smaller Elsa in play, which again, you should have access to in the limited format pretty easily. If you do get this card, uh, she can come in on turn six. Her ability deep freeze, when you play this character, you can exert two characters and they don't ready the following turn. So you effectively remove those characters from doing anything for two turns, the turn she's played and then the following turn, which is very, very good. I think this is constructed viable on the top end, especially with that shift. And for the limited, if you can get enough Elsa's to shift her, I think she is absolutely insane and limited. If you're relying on getting to eight, 
to play her. I think it's going to be very risky and very hard to do regularly as the decks don't normally get to eight, even if, unless you just have an insane ramp package. It's just not realistic to get to eight very often in limited. But again, if you can get enough else's to support the shift, getting her down at six could be absolutely game shattering. All right, guys, so that is the review for set one Amethyst. Again, make sure you leave your comments down below on what you think of Amethyst in set one. And until next time, guys, Hobby Hero out.